Our daily Bible reading for December 19th. Our reading today comes from the book of Revelation, chapters 8 and 9. Revelation chapters 8 and 9. We'll begin reading in verse 1 of chapter 8. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth, and there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire, mixed with blood, and these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light might be darkened, and a third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. Then I looked, and I heard an angel, heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth, at the blast of the other trumpets that the three angels are about to blow. Revelation chapter 9. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth. And he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. In appearance, the locusts were like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were what looked like crowns of gold. Their faces were like human faces, their hair like women's hair, and their teeth like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots with horses rushing into battle. They have tails and sting like scorpions, and their power to hurt people for five months is in their tails. They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek is called Apollyon. The first woe has passed. Behold, two woes are still to come. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour, the day, the month, and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. And this is how I saw the horses in my vision and those who rode them. They wore breastplates the color of fire and of sapphire and of sulfur. And the heads of the horses were like lions' heads. And fire and smoke and sulfur came out of their mouths. By these three plagues a third of mankind was killed, by the fire and smoke and sulfur coming out of their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouths, and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents with heads, and by means of them they wound. 
The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, nor give up worshipping demons and idols of gold and silver and bronze and stone and wood, which cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. A few thoughts for today. We have just finished with the seven seals. What we are to see next are the seven trumpets, and then we shall see the seven bowls. However, we are not seeing different things. In reality, what we are seeing is the same thing repeated over again. Within the seventh seal are the seven trumpets. Later in chapter 16, we shall see the bowls of God's wrath. All of these are reassurances that in every way, whether it is by natural, by invading, or by heavenly ways, God is in complete control. The golden censer of verse 4 of chapter 8 gives us a glimpse of something most wondrous. We see the prayers of the saints. Don't let this slip by without noting the power that is contained in these prayers. The prayers of the saints went up in this terrible time of tribulation. God hears our prayers. Over and over we are urged to render to God our petitions, our prayers, our supplications, and thanksgiving. Pray without ceasing is what Paul told the church at Thessalonica. When we are joyful, pray. When we have received blessings, pray with a thankful heart. When we are pressed in on all sides, pray, and then pray some more. The angel takes the censer, fills it with fire, and hurls it to the earth. This is not a meteor or an asteroid that ends all life on earth. Remember, this is a symbolic book. This reflects God's care for His beloved. If you touch my precious children, I will reveal my wrath upon you. That's exactly what we get here, a picture of God's wrath upon the Romans. Jesus would say, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 6. The trumpets that sound are once again the fury that God has at his disposal for punishment. The first four are what is hit, and the next two are how they are hit. There is also a relationship of the trumpet to the bowls. The darkness spoken of in chapter 9, verse 2, is often seen as that moral decadence that accompanies the fall of nations. Rome was seen as once glorious, but became morally bankrupt in the end. The sun being blotted out signifies the moral blindness of a nation. Question of the day. Have you thought of the saying, those who do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it, in reference to nations today? And finally, a thought to meditate on today. The scenes that unfold before us in chapters 8 and 9 are horrendous. The nation of Rome was willing to self-destruct rather than repent. In the same way, Pharaoh was willing to destroy Egypt rather than relent and let God's people go. And those are our thoughts for today, December 19th.